So today we're going to go over some shader code that will make a disappearing effect and a reappearing effect. Now, disclaimer about this shader, it's not really a refined final product, but it, hopefully it'll give you the basics of what you need to build your own shader in the future. So this shader is actually a material that's put onto the animated sprite of this character. So just make sure that it's not on the player itself, it's on the animated sprite. Obviously, we're going to start with the shader type, canvas item. And then we're going to add two uniforms, that way we can control how much the person has disappeared or been distorted. So the first one's going to be the amplitude, and that's just going to be kind of like the completion. Zero, zero is going to be not affected, and one is going to be completely gone. And I put a hint range here, which is not really necessary, but it's actually more for me showing you guys. I like having this little dial that I can just pull back and forth opposed to typing in numbers each time. And then we're going to have the rate, which you will see will affect how much wave we are actually going to have. So in this fragment shader, I have a whole bunch of examples that will be just slightly different so you can see what small changes can actually do. And the picture also completely faded away, which I shut off so we can focus on just the waves, and we'll get to that in just a minute. So first, we're going to find the offset that we need. In this sign function, we're just getting the UVY, which means up here, it's going to be 0. And as it goes down, it's going to be 1. And then we're going to multiply it by the rate. So the rate is in this example, a fairly arbitrary number that if you just move up, the sine wave gets more compact. And you can adjust this to whatever you feel like makes the uh, right effect for your shader. I'm going to leave it at about 20. So then we will add that final offset to the x coordinate of the y. So remember, we have this texture lookup. So we're going to set the color of our texture to the texture, the original texture, but we're instead of looking at the just the simple UV, we're going to add the offset to the X. Now you can add offset to the Y, uh, but you would probably change this and now the waves go the other direction. Um, it's a little bit different of an effect, but I mean, if that's what you want, I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick with this, this direction though. But I do encourage you to play around with which UV you get and uh, which side you set the offset to. Uh, again, you can get all different types of effects if you uh, do actually stick with the Y, and we can get a weird reflection type of feeling. But again, like these shaders can do whatever you want them to do. That's the reason why we're, that's the reason why they're so much fun. So in this next example, we're going to set the texture with the same exact line of code. If you look, that color line is the exact same as the wave line. But we're going to find the final offset in a different way. So in this one, we're going to actually slice the character into lines, and then they will exit and disappear in different directions. So you could do an if statement that would see if that sign function returns a negative or a positive number. But if functions are kind of slow, they're not really uh, performance friendly. And this also gives me an opportunity to introduce the step function. So the step function is a built-in function, and you give it a number, and it will check to see if that number is above or below the second number. So the second number is just zero, so we're going to see if the number is above or below zero in this one very small line of code. And so if the number is below, it will return a 0. If it is above, it will return a 1. So then I multiply everything by 2. 
So this offset direction is either going to return a 0 or a 2. In the final offset, we are also going to minus a 1, which is going to give us our negative 1 or 1. It's a short amount of code, but it's a long mental step to just get a number that's either 1 or negative 1, depending on how far down the picture it is. So all this math for each pixel, it wants to take the UV, which will be 0 or 0.2 or 0.5 or 1, anywhere in between those, and return either negative 1 or 1. That way, it can know whether it should go left or right. And again, we multiply it by the amplitude divided by 1, just so we know how far it is in the disappearing. So you can also change how big the lines are with the rate. So this one is just about the same. But instead of taking the UVY, we're going to take the UVX. And again, the final offset, we will find it in the same direction. We're using that step function the same. And instead of adding to the X UV, we're going to add to the Y UV. And the effect is you can slice the person up this way and have them disappear this way. And a third example of the slicing up is we're going to do essentially the same exact thing again, except we're going to apply that offset to both the X and the Y, and you can get this effect where they just kind of dis go off in different directions. Now, I'm not saying any of these are better or worse than the other, I just want to show you that with small changes, you can actually do a lot, and I encourage you to play around with whether you are finding the sine, maybe the cosine or the tangent, or change these UVs around to the UVY, add the offsets in different ways, and you can get tons of different types of disappearing effects that you can tailor to your own taste. Now, one of the big things that we haven't gone over yet, though, is the fading. So the basic idea is that we want to fade the entire picture as the amplitude gets up to one. So um, I suppose a, maybe a better word for amplitude could have been like completedness or something like that, or just how much, how far into the process of disappearing it is. It, amplitude was just the word I used. Um, but that's what I'm trying to describe here with this. And if we use just the alpha, this is what problem happens, is we're not actually looking at the texture, we're just looking at the amplitude. So the where everything is supposed to be transparent, it actually isn't transparent anymore because we just changed the alpha to be one because the amplitude is at zero and which leaves it at 1. Now, it does disappear, but that's not really what we're looking for. I mean, you can't have this black square just behind everything. It looks really bad. So the next step is to take the texture. So again, we're going to find the, we're going to set the color alpha. We're going to look up, do a texture lookup, of the original picture, and at each spot, each coordinate along the UV, we're going to find the alpha, and then we are going to minus the amplitude, or how far along the process we are. So what you get is this, which in itself isn't the worst. You might actually want something along those lines where you um, have a silhouette left over, but as you can see, it kind of leaves this awkward border around here. And what's happening is the alpha is getting outside of its natural range. It is below zero, or yet yeah, it's below zero in this case. So, uh, so one more step that we can do is we can clamp that texture, or clamp that number between zero and one. So what clamp does is just like in GD script, it will take the first number and it won't get lower and it won't get higher than one. So when we have that, we end up with this. So at least 
it completely disappears. But we still do we do still have this silhouette in the background. And again, if you want that effect, I think it's actually kind of a neat effect to have. Uh, but if you don't want it, the reason why that's happening is remember here, we are applying the alpha by what the original texture looked like. And up here, when we're moving stuff around, we are placing the color by the UV plus the offset. So the color is moving away and the alpha is staying exactly how it originated. So what we're going to have to do is apply, again, this has the clamp, texture lookup, and we're going to apply that same offset. Now this one, I have to add that offset to the second one too, since that's the one we're currently on. And we will get, voila. Okay, and when we play this now, we get this weird disappearing. So I do have to mention that I did add a node. It's just an area 2D with a collision shape. That's the green part here. And I added just an icon. And in the script, just briefly, I added a function, or a, I added a couple signals for a body entered, body exited, and again, these should be signals, but I don't want to make this too long in explaining everything. I'm just calling the function directly in the body that is entering it, which would be the player. I made an animation that will play when I enter that area, and I will play it backwards when I leave that area. So, uh, just a very brief glimpse. So I added an animation player and added an animation called teleport, and I had a difficult time directly getting to the shader parameter, so I had to export a float called the shader amplitude, and I set the shader amplitude at zero, and then one, and uh, that's just going to change the variable in the script, so I have to actually update it. So I added a function, you can go to track call method, and I update the amplitude multiple times. Now this is a pretty just hodgepodge way to actually get this to work, but just so you can actually get it to work, uh, we'll have to, I have to look into how to actually make this smoother. But basically, we're just going to call the function that's going to update the amplitude shader param over and over again every time that they calls the function in this two second segment. And to get this shader amplitude, you can just go to the player. And up here, since I exported it, you should be able to just click this little key. If you like this tutorial, let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions, for sure let me know. It's kind of a complicated topic that has a lot of room for misunderstanding. So uh, don't feel shy and let me know what you'd like to see next.